हेलो स्टूडेंट्स काल अपन रेस्पिरेशन टॉपिक इंट्रोडक्शन घंट्रोडक्शन मधे गैशियस एक्सचेंज इन प्लांट्स एंड इन एनिमल्स ये टाइप्स अपन शिकलो क्या यूनिट वरती कई एम सी क्यूज मैं तुम्हारा आज पठवत है त्या एम सी क्यूज तुम्हें आज सॉल्व करा उद्या अपन डिस्कस करूँ ये तेज करेक्ट एन्सर जे है तो मैं तुम्हारा उद्या वीडियो लेक्चर मधे संग आता पुढ़ अपने जाए मे ह्यूमन रेस्पिरेटरी सीस्टीम नाउ इट इज वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टंट सीस्टीम प्रेजेंट इन ह्यूमन बॉडी फॉर रेस्पिरेशन एंड नाउ यू आर वेल नो दिस रेस्पिरेशन इज अ बायोकेमिकल प्रोसेस इन विच द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू केमिकल एनर्जी दैट मीन्स द ए टी पी सो ए टी पी इज जनरेटेड ड्यूरिंग दिस वाइटल प्रोसेस नोन एज रेस्पिरेशन सो प्रोडक्शन ऑफ एनर्जी along with exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide occurred through one system known as human respiratory system this human respiratory system includes upper respiratory parts and lower respiratory parts now which are the upper respiratory part the upper respiratory part is nose nasal cavities la pharynx larynx so these are the upper parts of human respiratory system nose can having nasal cavities or nasal chamber then pharynx then larynx okay yeah? the lower respiratory parts are trachea this is trachea trachea then bronchioles these are bronchioles bronchioles and at the end there are alveolus is present or terminal alveolus air sac containing alveolus they are present inside the lungs so overall the pharynx sorry uh, the trachea the bronchioles and the lungs containing terminal parts of bronchioles and alveolus these are the lower parts of respiratory system so for our convenience we uh, distinguish these parts into upper and lower regions now we'll go one by one at first nose region at first nose region you know very well the nose is present on our face it is triangular shaped diagrammatically if we draw it is triangular shaped region present on our face region this nose has external slits in this way a paired slit is present on the tip of nose this slit is known as external nares external nares or nostrils the nose shows presence of two slits externally known as external nares or nostrils this external nares then leads inside into nose known as nasal chamber nasal cavity or nasal chamber 
This nasal chamber is divided into two regions. Or in another word, complete nasal cavity is divided into two regions, two chambers, right and left. Suppose that this is the right one, this is the left chamber, nasal chamber present inside this nose region due to presence of one partition. This partition is known as mace ethymoid bone. Mace ethymoid bone. So in short, the mace ethymoid bone Sorry, mace ethymoid cartilage, not actually bone, cartilage because it is uh, elastic in nature, that's why cartilage. This mace ethymoid cartilage divide complete nasal cavity into two chambers, right nasal chamber and left nasal chamber. Clear? Okay? So, that is about the nasal chamber partition. Now, further. Each and every nasal chamber, that means right as well as left, is further divided into three regions. Suppose that this is the first region, this is the second region and this is the first, second and third region. These three regions, each and, each and every one, first, second and uh, third one. They have their respective names. This first region is known as vestibule. Second region is known as respiratory part. Of nasal chamber. And the third region is known as olfactory. Or sensory part of nasal chamber. So overall nasal chamber is divided into three regions vestibule, respiratory part and olfactory part. Now we'll study one by one. What is vestibule? Vestibule is proximal. You can see the proximal one or the uh, tip or the starting point of nose shows vestibule. Now internally, this external layer opens into nasal cavity or internal layer inside the vestibule. Internally, it is lined with hairs. It is lined with hairs. So these are the hairs. So what is the function of these hairs present in vestibule? These hairs filter air which is entering inside the nose region as well as uh, trap the dust particles entering into the nose. And for that purpose, these hairs are present. Remember, such kind of information is important for MCQs. The vestibule containing hairs trap the dust particle and filters air. Okay? Then respiratory part. The respiratory part is middle one and it is internally provided with lots of blood capillaries. Highly vascular. Highly vascular. Lots of blood capillaries are present inside this second part of nasal chamber known as respiratory part. Now what is its function? As it is present at the middle region and uh, it is highly vascular, a lot of circulation is provided to this region. It warms up air and uh, then direct the air into the third part of nose. So warming, warming of hair to kill bacteria or viruses or any pathogen present inside the incoming air, that function will be carried out by this respiratory part. Clear?
Then the third part is olfactory part or sensory part. Internally, it is lined by single layer of sensory epithelium. Single layer of sensory epithelium. Single layer of sensory epithelium. That means, particularly, this sensory epithelium, it is provided with afferent nerves of olfactory nerve. This olfactory nerve is the first nerve present in our brain known as first cranial nerve and its main function is sense of smell. Right? So how the sense of smell occur? When air containing particles, smell particles enters inside our nose, these particles settle down on the surface of the sensory epithelium due to which there is action potential is generated and that action potential goes to our brain and detect the sense of smell depending upon our previous experience. That means we have to learn about that smell in our lifetime. Then and then only you can identify what kind of smell is that. Yeah, so that is the additional information to you. What is the function of this sensory epithelium and how it is work. Clear? Yeah? So here we complete this nose region. Under which we have studied this nose is triangular shaped structure present on our face region. It has paired slits known as external nares or nostrils. These external nares opens into internal nares inside which there is a complete nasal cavity is present. This nasal cavity is divided into right and left nasal chambers by means of this mesethymoid cartilage, mesethymoid cartilage and total all or both right and left nasal chamber possess three regions, vestibule, respiratory part and olfactory part. Vestibule is proximal part, respiratory part is middle part, olfactory part is innermost part. Vestibule is provided with hairs and that hair trap the dust particle and filter air. Respiratory part is provided with blood vessels, highly vascular. So it swarms up air entering inside nose so that Whatever pathogens, maybe bacteria, viruses or any kind of pathogens, they are killed due to warming of air. And then air enters inside the third part of nose known as olfactory part. This olfactory part is provided with sensory epithelium, a single layer of sensory epithelium and its main function is sense of smell. Right? So here we complete the first part, nodes. Then we will go to the next part. Then we will go to the next part known as a pharynx. Now what is a pharynx? Pharynx is a common passage for nasal chamber and the posterior region of mouth, right? So, it is a common region for opening of nose and opening of mouth, right? So, pharynx has again three regions. First region is oropharynx. First region is oropharynx. Then, Laryngopharynx, laryngopharynx, then there is a third region, palate bone. So, pharynx possess three regions, oropharynx, laryngopharynx and palate bone. Now, 
this uh, oropharynx is uppermost and common for food and air so it is uppermost and common for food and air that's why it is known as oropharynx oro means mouth clear yeah? then laryngopharynx is the next region of pharynx that means oropharynx continue into this laryngo into laryngo pharynx so you can see here this region is oropharynx this region and then it continues further here known as laryngo pharynx in the region where larynx is present that's why the name is given laryngo pharynx then palate bone now you are familiar we have a mouth cavity the mouth cavity is bounded by floor and a roof the floor shows presence of tongue muscular tongue whereas roof is made up of one bone known as palate bone so that region of my mouth cavity showing palate bone that forms the third region of this pharynx clear so commonly this palate bone is present in between oropharynx and laryngopharynx clear so that's why this pharynx is having these three regions oropharynx laryngopharynx and palate bone remember the names remember that their positions and remember their functions also again we go back oropharynx is uppermost common for food and air laryngopharynx that means oropharynx continue into laryngopharynx near to uh, larynx and palate bone it is a roof of our mouth cavity formed by one specific bone known as palate bone so it is common for oropharynx and laryngo pharynx so here we complete the next part of respiratory system that is pharynx now we go to the third part known as larynx known as larynx larynx is also known as sound or voice box sound or voice box you can see in the figure here larynx now in our textbook the separate separate diagram is given for larynx in this way so the that, that is about the rough diagram of this larynx this larynx shows hyoid bone hyoid bone then thyroid cartilage this one is thyroid cartilage thyroid cartilage so in between these two it extends known as larynx right this is epiglottis epiglottis thyroid membrane thyroid membrane laryngeal prominence this is laryngeal prominence laryngeal prominence and our laryngeal prominence and below which there is a trachea this is trachea provided with c shaped cartilaginous rings or 
cartilaginous rings. So we will study in a detail what is a larynx. Now larynx is internally lined by vocal cords. These vocal cords are collectively known as sound box or sound voice or uh, uh, sound box or voice box. They produce vibes and that's why uh, the larynx is also known as a sound box. How this voice is or sound is produced? The sound when air goes inside and outside through the larynx, the vocal cords vibrates and there is a production of sound occur. Now this larynx opens into laryngopharynx by means of one slit like opening known as glottis. Now this is two dimensional figure. So we cannot show its opening. And laryngopharynx, the lar here you can see in this region. This larynx opens into one specific slit like opening known as glottis. It is the opening of respiratory system. This glottis is provided with one flap known as epiglottis known as epiglottis this epiglottis close glottis or in another word epiglottis is a lid of glottis why such epiglottis is present see epiglottis is made up of cartilage it is a flap like structure made up of cartilage which closes glottis, that is opening of this larynx, as well as collectively you can say trachea. This epiglottis avoid entry of food particles during swallowing process. When we eat, engulf food bolus, or when we masticate the food material in our mouth cavity, this epiglottis close glottis and avoid the entry of food particles and that's why epiglottis is present on glottis. Never any food particles enter inside the lungs that will be prevented due to presence of this epiglottis. So in that way in larynx you have to study that Larynx is also known as sound box or voice box. It has internally vocal cords. It is uh, supported by hyoid bone and thyroid cartilage. It has one slit like opening and internally vocal, uh, vocal cords. When air goes inside and goes outside, a sound is created because of vibration of that vocal cords. And this larynx has slit like opening glottis into a trachea and that glottis is Covered, covered with AP glottis. Okay, so here we complete larynx. Now we we'll go to the next uh, region of human respiratory system, and that is trachea. Trachea. You can see in this figure, this trachea is elongated, narrow, thin but muscular tube measuring about 10 to 12 centimeter in length. Trachea is about 20 to 12 centimeter in length and always present in front of esophagus present in front of esophagus. Trachea is present in front of esophagus. Reach into the middle of thoracic cavity and then bifurcates. You can see here. Larynx continue further into a tube. That tube is also known as a wind pipe or wind pipe or air pipe 
this wind pipe or trachy or air pipe extends through the thoracic cavity, middle of thoracic cavity, measures about 10 to 12 centimeter in length, tubular, thin but muscular and uh, present in front of esophagus. Now this trachy is surrounded by 16 to 20 C-shaped C-shaped cartilaginous rings. You can see here. These are C-shaped cartilaginous rings. C-shaped cartilaginous rings. Why? Why such C-shaped cartilaginous rings are present? The reason behind is these rings they are C-shaped like in this way. Alphabet C. They avoid the collapse of trachea when air goes in and when air goes out. Clear? Yeah? So they avoid the collapse of trachea during breathing or during respiration. And that's why the trachea is provided with 6 to 20, 16 to 20 cartilaginous rings. Internally, trachea is lined by ciliated pseudostratified pseudo stratified epithelium and with mucus glands. Remember these words will be asked in MCQ. Always remember internally uh, trachea is ciliated, linings is ciliated, pseudostratified and having mucus gland. Why? Again to remove dust particles from the air. Pseudostratified means uh, time to time the upper layer of that epithelium is shed off and in between that epithelium the modified unicellular glands which release mucus they are present because mucus trap the dust particles even after filter, filtering air through the nodes through the trachea maybe a very fine fine dust particles may enter inside the respiratory system so that dust particles are trapped, entangled by this mucus and then time to time they are removed by means of process, you know, very well coughing, sneezing, etc. Right? So that is about trachea. Then bronchi. Then bronchi. You can see here the trachea is Medially present in thoracic cavity, when it reaches to the middle of thoracic cavity, it bifurcates into two tubes known as right bronchus. This is right bronchus. This one is left bronchus. And then they enter into respective lungs. These bronchi right and left also provided with C-shaped cartilaginous rings. Clear? Yeah? So, further, these bronchioles enters into lungs and then they divide into branches and branches and branches. We will see learn afterward uh, when we see actually the nature of lungs. So, here we co complete the human respiratory system up to bronchi level under which we have studied nodes, then parents, then larynx, then trachea and bronchi. The remaining part is lungs that will be completed in the next video. Thank you.